Have you grown tired of that aging hero shooter experience with the same 32 characters shuffled a dozen at a time onto crowded maps you've seen a million times just to unlock some loot boxes? Well, now you can charge into the all-new hero shooter experience with 35 characters shuffled 10 at a time onto slightly less crowded maps and finally unlock the greatest invention in the history of making money for publishers, a battle pass. It's time for Overwatch 2. Dive into the login queue as you wait for your chance to finally get into your favorite new free-to-play reiteration and slide through a menu screen full of fresh ways to get back the game you previously purchased. Throw that loot box in the trash and get ready to explore the thrilling pages of a battle pass where you can replace that limitless gambling with the privilege of paying money to have a reason to grind through matches. Check out the all-new assortment of cosmetics and recreated character models that you can almost tell are different from what they were previously. Look at that, he has a beard now. Now that the rich strategy of six-player squads has been carved down to a lean, mean five-person team, the role of a single tank as a leader has never been more important. Now you can finally have the entirety of success or failure hinge on the abilities of one player so you don't have to waste time figuring out who to yell at when you lose. But if you're still not sure who to blame, there's always the tried and true method of accusing new characters of being overpowered. First up is Sojourn, the robotic leg damage dealer that takes the assault rifle precision of Soldier 76 and duplicates it because Blizzard is out of ideas. However, instead of a rocket launcher, she has a railgun that charges as she fires for when you need that extra little burst to ruin someone's day. She also has the incredible power of sliding around on the ground. And if you're tired of tracking your precision aim, just drop her disruptor ability and trap people in a web of pure annoyance. Then when you finally charge your ultimate, you can use it to use your railgun more. Nice. But if you want a little more nuance and to carry the weight of the match on your shoulders, get ready to scrub your self-esteem on the washboard abs of Junker Queen. She's strapped to the mohawk with weapons like a pump-action shotgun that does shotgun things and a knife. That's a knife. That she can chuck at enemies, causing them to bleed and use it to jerk them back toward her with a big-ass magnet. She also has an axe ability that swings an axe at people with an axe-like range. But if that wasn't enough, she can also yell so loud that everyone around her gets a health and speed boost. Then for an ultimate, she'll pop that axe back out of whatever crevice it resides and dive forward, chopping the sweet hell out of anyone in her path. Finally, a new healer joins Blizzard's profiteering adventure and takes up residence as an unlock 55 levels into the battle pass. Kiriko joins the ever-growing collection of healers that deal as much damage as they reverse. She can peg faces with a deadly kunai and fix even the most grievous wounds by throwing a stack of papers onto your mangled body. She can also toss down a friendly little ball of absolute immunity and negative effect cleansing that makes Baptiste's immortality field look like a cheap knockoff. And when she's finally had her fill of knife and friendly paper throwing, she can summon a fox spirit that makes pretty much every aspect of life better for the allies in front of her. Oh, and she can also teleport to allies and wall climb in case the other healers weren't already jealous from their lack of abilities. But if that impressive amount of changes and additions aren't enough for you, they've also done the impossible and added a whole new game mode. Where once attackers and defenders took turns slowly pushing a card of mysterious importance using only the power of friendship, now two teams compete head-to-head -to, -head to befriend a giant robot who pushes a small wall of mysterious importance. Whoever makes it to the end of the line or furthest in the time limit wins the match and experiences one of the most okay additions to the entire game. Overwatch 2, a new game for new ways to take your money. I know everyone joked about this being Overwatch 1.5, but with the story mode PvE coming at some later date, it makes me wonder why they even bothered releasing this at all right now. The changes and additions are minimal and on par with the ones that happened before with regular updates. The free-to-play aspect will probably attract more players, but it also just feels like an excuse to swap from loot boxes to a battle pass so they can get back into those countries that ban them for gambling. There are some new maps, but it kind of seems like they just swap night and day on some existing maps to pad the changelog. It's also a bit concerning to me that they essentially took away a game that people had purchased and replaced it with another that people may or may not enjoy. The systems and balance of the original game are now gone and will never come back. Overwatch 2 is less a sequel and more a relaunch to pad the dying player base and milk them just a bit more before they can destroy their next franchise. So for re-releasing a six-year-old game practically unchanged, adding a whole new set of launch day failures, and using it all to disguise a slightly less exploitative way of making more money, I'm giving Overwatch 2 the abbreviated score of... bad. 
If you'd like to see more hot takes, warm satire, and tepid commentary about video games, make sure to subscribe and check out my other abbreviated reviews.